here at Gleason's Gym in Brooklyn, New York, and this is for the Danny Garcia going up against Ivan Redcash card. It is a WBC welterweight title eliminator fight. It'll take place Saturday, January 25th at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. It'll be broadcast live on Showtime, brought to you by Premier Boxing Champions. Also in the house, we have Jared Hurd, who will be going up against Francisco Santana. And now, let's go to the media workouts. Uh, Ivan was talking a lot in the back how he wants to close the show early. He's got a big surprise for you. He wants to meet you right in the center of the ring. Are you willing to do that, or are you going to try to acquire some rounds in here? Well, I'm the bigger, stronger guy, so if he does that, he's in trouble. Um, but we're ready for whatever. We, we train, we, we banged it out in sparring, we box in sparring. And as a true champion, you got to go in there and make adjustments. It could be an easy night, or we might have to dig deep. We're ready for whatever. No. What are some of the things you do to make sure you don't overlook someone? Well, you, as a veteran, you know, you learn every fight. Every fight, you know, um, every fight you learn. And um, like I said before, I've been the underdog and won. You know, I've been the top dog and won. I've been in big fights when the magnitude is big. So you have to treat every fight like it's your last, actually. You have to treat every, because every fight can be your last in this sport. So you never know what's going to happen. So you have to go in there and prepare yourself mentally and physically 100% for every fight. Even though sometimes it's harder because the opponent might not have the hype as a big name and it might be hard to wake up and do it. But mentally as a fighter, you have to hit that switch and be ready for whatever. You know, I've already been in a lot of big fights in my career. I, I fought 13 world champions. I've been in 10 world title fights. So it's nothing new to me. Um, I know Red Cat is hungry, but I know what it, it takes to win at this level, and I'm ready. Does it add a little comfort that you're in the hard place, which is like your home away from home? You always find yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like I have unfinished business here. You know, I, this is my house, and I feel like I have unfinished, unfinished business here, so I, I, I plan on making a statement. Any message for the haters or the doubters out there doing Oh, no, man. If you love me, you love me. If you hate me, you hate me. Just keep keep watching me. That's it. Hey, hey Danny. Hey. Uh, you know, welcome back to your second home, of course. Have you done anything different in a training camp? You seem very happy inside the ring. Um, you're smiling a lot. It looks like you're, you know, enjoying yourself, you know. Yeah, well, you know, I fell in love. I, I'm, you know, you got to understand. Uh, I've been boxing for 21 years. You know, I've been boxing since I was 10 years old. So all the big fights and all the pressure over your career, sometimes you get tired of it. You know, sometimes you get tired of it, and um, and sometimes it takes you, it takes some to wake you back up. You know, I'm 31 years old. I feel good. I feel young, and um, I, I will say that you know I fell in love. I, I fell in love with the sport of boxing again. Let's no, put it I, that way. And what, what woke you back up? You know, it was just you got to understand. I've been fighting at the championship level since 2012 when I first my world, my world titles. I held my 140 pound titles from one 2012 to 2000. 16. Then I moved up and held the titles from 16 to 18. I think when I fought Thurman. So there's a lot of pressure, and when people expect a lot from you, sometimes you forget what makes you happy in the sport of boxing. You, you, uh, you so so you lose the love of the sport. You know what I mean? Because there's so much pressure, and it, be, it becomes a business. So it's, it's like you're not having fun no more. And um, I, I noticed that uh, this is what makes me happy. When I don't fight and I'm sitting home, I just don't feel happy. So, you know, I just count, I just started counting my blessings. And this you is a blessing for me. Rest, maybe? Yeah, maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Maybe that's what it was. Mentally, I probably just needed some time to just let my head breathe and, and just see, you know, just fall in love with it. And I just, I love it. I felt good. Like my last camp, the Granados fight, I felt good. I felt happy. This camp, I felt happy. And I just, I'm in a point in my career, I've been through it all already. So, I have no choice but to be happy and count my blessings and go out there and give my fans a great fight. Now, Danny, um, I, I have to speak. Um, when you picked Ivan, it was a very good choice because of softball. Yes, sir. He was a third softball or a switch hitter. I had a conversation with Terrence Crawford a couple weeks ago. He acknowledged that you're high ranking in the WBO. I told him yeah. you were number one. Yeah. He encouraged and allowed the WBO to say mandate the fight. I would like it. He said it was a good storyline. You guys fought in the amateurs. He didn't speak anything negative, but he said he would like that fight. If they mandate you in that, would you be interested in facing? Yeah, I believe I, I believe I'm ranked number one in WBC, yep. WBA, and WBO. Yep, so, so we got a lot the of balls in my court. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for sure. Like I said before, this is a business, and uh, this is a business, and any anything can be made if it's just done right. 
you think really I, not much to say. I mean, we fought for free. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, we, we want the big fights for sure. We want the big fights. Um, I just I have to worry about Red Cash right now. I can't overlook them. Um, dominate them, and then the sky's the limit after that. I think any any fight can be made. Prediction for your fight Saturday night. You know, I'm going for the KO. Danny Garcia KO under uh, under nine rounds. Next fight pay per view. Danny Garcia. Yes, sir. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Thank y'all. We're here at Gleason's Gym in Brooklyn, New York, and this is for the Danny Garcia going up against Ivan Redcash card. It is a WBC welterweight title eliminator fight. It'll take place Saturday, January 25th at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. It'll be broadcast live on Showtime, brought to you by Premier Boxing Champions. Also in the house, we have Jared Hurd, who will be going up against Francisco Santana. And now, let's go to the media workouts. I gave him just to make a beautiful fight and the victory will be mine. We will make a beautiful knockout. It's going to be a great fight. Uh, the winner is going to be mine. It's going to be a very nice knockout. Thank you. I'm good. Ivan, this is a huge fight for you against Danny Garcia. What weaknesses do you see in, in him that you can expose? It's a big deal for you. What do you see in Danny's weakness? What do you see in him that you can expose? It's a big deal for you. What do you see in Danny's weakness? He underestimates me. It's his first big problem. He thinks that I'm too much for him. He's wrong. It's going to be a serious fight. Uh, the biggest weakness I see is he's not taking me seriously. He's counting us as a tune-up fight. That's a big mistake. It's not going to be a tune-up fight for him. Um, Ivan, you know, there's a lot of concern on the fact that you're moving up in weight and you're fighting a bigger guy. Are you a little bit more comfortable at this weight, seeing the fact that you had a great performance last fight? You know, going into this fight. Скажи я как много весу, и что то Скажи, я как многие бойцы. Тренируюсь очень сильно, не сбрасывать веса. Тренируюсь, чтобы все сделать для победы. Like a lot of fighters, usually when I'm in a fight, I'm, I'm fighting in a camp to cut weight. In this camp, I don't have to do that, so I feel strong, and this is going to be a strong performance. At the comment, real quick, you had pink hair last time I saw you. Now you have green hair. Is there a reason why you came here? Почему вы зеленые волосы? Просто было розовый сейчас, зеленый почему? Как мне просто нравится. That's just how I feel. I like it. Yeah, Ivan, how do you know that Danny is taking you lightly, man? Откуда вы знаете, что Дэнни ведет вас как тюнок в Он так чувствует. Как вы знаете? Он готовится к следующему бою Эрл Спенс, Мэнни Пакьяо. И перед тем, как с ними встретиться, он выбрал меня, потому что я левша. He, listen, he's already planning to fight either Errol Spence or Manny Pacquiao. And before fighting them, he picked me. Why? Because I'm a Southpaw. And have you figured out what a win means to you? What would a win bring to Red Cat? What would it be for you? What would it be for you? For me, this is a goal of my life. This is a goal to win this fight and to meet with Manny Pacquiao. This is for me. It'll, it'll change my life, but I've worked my whole life to get to this point, and if I win, I will have my opportunity with Manny Pacquiao. That's the plan. Ivan, with all due respect, obviously Danny has to get past you first, but you just mentioned the likes of Manny Pacquiao and Errol Spence. Do you think he's got the cap capabilities to beat them? Um, я не думаю сейчас ни о чем, я думаю только январь 25 числа. I'm not thinking about that, I can only think about my fight on Saturday. Uh, just a quick question, you know, originally it seemed like Adrian Broner and you were supposed to fight. Is there any future in that fight when you are drawn to fight? Вы думаете, если вы с ним встретите в дальнейшем моменте, если вы выиграете субботу? Он хороший боец, но у него хромает дисциплина. Сейчас я не думаю о Бронере и еще о других бойцах. Я думаю только о Дэнни, как мне сделать красивое шоу и выиграть его. Бронер очень хороший бойец, он просто не хватает дисциплины. Я не знаю, я не могу думать об этом, я только фокусирую на этом бойце с Дэнни. Мой последний вопрос. Ты начал тренировать с Мозли Джуниор, я заметил, что его отец здесь. Это тот же тип тренировки, который ты всегда имеешь? Или что-то другое? Как вы сравнивали с вами, что вы сейчас работаете с Мозли, с папой? Папа сделал Шейна. Он 
очень хороший тренер. И он такой, как Шейн, просто немного old school. Um, he's a great trainer. He's helped me a lot. He's very similar to when I worked with Shane, but his father's very old school, which is great. Just talking outside this fight, who do you think is the number one welterweight in this division? Who's the best in 147 today? Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao. Потому что он легенда, потому что он восьмикратный чемпион мира, и я присутствовал на последнем бою Кит Турме. Я увидел у него очень крутой. He's a legend. He's a world champion. I watched this fight with Keith Thurman, and what he showed in that fight was was amazing. Ivan, how do you see this fight unfolding mentally in your head? What is this fight going to look like against Garcia? What's the goal? How can the boy punch himself? Just knock him out. Just knock him out. Knock him out. Beat him down. One final message. Take the crown. So who? So who can you scratch, Danny? Danny, be ready. Danny, twenty five. Coach, what about this kid? What are his chances on Saturday night? What's going to happen? Well, we have a great chance to win this fight, get the crown, because Ivan's been on the zone, all the zone for the throne. So we're going to do a great job out there. How long have you been working with? Oh, about two months. And he brought me on board about two. What have you seen from him? As far as the goes. I think his intensity has put, built up a little bit. And then, uh, I think he got good sharp punches and good hooks, good straight right hands, good left, good hooks. He's got good stuff to work with. And you like working that corner? Oh, working yeah. Corner, no problem. Yeah? That's right. We'll do some power boxing out there. Keep the pressure. You know, make him confused. Keep him confused. Do you see Ivan having a fast start? I know we, we need to stay. We need to stay on top of our game. That's what we got to do. I asked Ivan the same question. What weaknesses do you, as a coach, see in Danny Garcia that Ivan can exploit? Well, Danny Garcia has a lot of wide punches. You know, he throws. So we got to be careful about all those wide punches. You know, basically, and beat him to the punch. Yes, uh, it, it is. But because I'm super motivated for a huge fight against Danny, because if I win, I'm going to get a title opportunity. That's what I'm about. But you know, let me say, we don't want to say if we win, we are going to win. Also in the house, we have Jared Hurd, who will be going up against Francisco Santana. And now, let's go to the media workouts. Not too much of a difference as far, except for the things like going out of town to train and not being at home with a lot of distractions and things like that. Uh, and, and another thing we worked on with our, my, my previous trainer, is he worked on a lot of Conditioning as far as stamina and, and working through 12 rounds, 12 hard rounds. We just focus on being explosive. We more on that. Now with, with my uh, training coach K, we working on fundamentals. It's, uh, it's it's not that we didn't have the fundamentals back then, but we kind of forgot about it. We we didn't pay as much attention to them, and now we we see how how important it is. It's not your work ethic and your heart and your will that's gonna get you through every fight. Sometimes you got to step back and go back to the basics, and that's what we're doing. Um, got to ask you about. Fight this past weekend. What's your take on the Williams fight? Uh, man, I really don't have no comment on it. You know, what I mean, I got to focus on January 25th. So the same thing would happen to me. I mean, you know, it just wasn't this night that night. Uh, he, he bounced back before, so most likely he'll bounce back again. Going off that, what would a win on Saturday mean for you? Would you want that rematch? Uh, we got to see, man, because you know he doesn't have the belt no more. So I don't know what's going to happen. We will have to sit back and wait for our team. Um, you know, who knows what's going to happen, man? I, I, I don't really know. I, like I said. I've been so focused on just making sure that that don't happen to me fight night. I really didn't look past this guy, uh, Francisco Santana. Can you tell us a little bit about Francisco? Oh yeah, he's a guy that comes for you know. Uh, people people think this is as like a uh, um, what you want to call it a tune up fight for me, but which it kind of is. I went down to a ten rounder. It's more of a fight that where I want to see how things work out with me and coach my coach, new coach in the corner, and. Uh, but but this guy's not. It's, it's, it's like a guy like Rosario, who's who is coming to the fight and not just coming to, to, to get a paycheck. So I got to be on my toes. It's all for me. Appreciate it, Jared. I, I have to start off. I know it's always been in there a little bit, but I saw a little bit more defensive slipping things yeah. like that. Like, are we seeing a new Jared or a different Jared? Or I would say. Um, yeah. I mean, people saying that it's a new Jared. I feel like. It's the old me. I'm just getting back to it. You know, uh, if guys see my fight on, on uh, Showbox New Generation when I fought Frank Eliza, I had defense. I was using my height and range. Um, it's just that me preparing for Aris Landy Lara 
at the time, I was developing this pressure style. And like I said, I forgot about the fundamentals and the basics, so now I'm just trying to get back to it. Are we going to see some slipping, making them miss a little bit? Almost definitely, man. You know, I, I look back at my fights and it kind of scared me a little bit, man. All the, all the passes we had in the ring, you know, uh, and I look at some of them fights and I'm like, Man, them guys wasn't even getting as hit as much as I was in the fight, you know what I mean? And it, and it made me really wake up and say, you know, I'm blessed because I had back-to-back -back fights of the year. And when you have fights of the year, man, I mean, it's not a one-sided fight. I mean, it's back and forth. So I'm like, man, I don't want to have these fights of the year each and every year be candidates for that. I want to I wanna have one-sided fights and, and, and not be so back and forth. So it really opened my eyes that I know it's exciting. I know that's what people like to see. But I got to think about myself and put myself first and my health. And I got to get back to defensive and defensively and moving my head. I just have to ask, because you accomplished a lot in this division. The division is very competitive. How long do you see yourself staying in this division? I'm just curious, because Hunter probably is a 160. Confirmed that it's not. Right, well, yeah, yeah. I was so close. I was this close to become an undisputed man. You know, I was right there. Of course, I had the hiccup against J-Rock. And that's still a, a goal of mine that I want to accomplish in the 54 division before I move up. So without that happening, man, I, I know for a fact that was a bad night for me on J-Rock night. Um, you know, like I said, the, the team wasn't the team that I thought we had. And it was just a small hiccup, but I know that that wasn't me. And I'm coming to get what I was supposed to be at the number one spot. The best in uh, 154 if I go to 160. Jared, well, over the weekend, when you see, you know, J-Rock losing, you know, does that open your eyes more? Does that mentally, you know, uh, have you more focused going into the fight with Santana so this doesn't happen to you? Uh, well, it didn't do anything. I mean, I was always focused. So, I know, I mean, I know that having this new coach coming off a loss, it's going to be a lot of eyes on me. What he's going to do different now? What is going to be, what type of Jerry is going to come to the ring this night? So, that was always my focus. I mean, the fight didn't change anything. I always was ready, prepared to go out here and display that. The, 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 the new Jared Hurd, the reborn Jared Hurd. Would you, would you say your defense will be your new offense? Uh, no, no, my offense will always be my offense. <laughs> I'm not depending on my defense to be my offense. It's just that I was looking to take a few shots just to land mine. And this this time going around won't be that way. Not necessarily being the biggest name opponent, but do you feel like this is the biggest fight of your career just from what you have to prove and to, to uh, yeah, every fight from this point on is the biggest fight in my career because I'm, I'm trying to build, uh, become a legend, man. I'm building my legacy. So at the end of the day, no matter who I face, it's always a big point in my career. What do you want people to walk away from Saturday saying about Jared Hurd? Man, I just want you to say that, you know, uh, like I said, just because I fell back don't mean I fell off. Um, you know, like I said, I had this small hit in my career. It was a bad night. You know, no excuses, but I know for a fact what I could do on it. Uh, can I ask you, it seemed like, you know, with the new training, we didn't get the full storyline. How do you guys meet? How do you choose? Just overall, how do you guys get this together as this team? Uh, well, Coach K had uh, some great fighters all, all along. You know, he trained with the Olympic team in 2016. He's training with the guys. He's working with the guys now here for 2020. And uh, he used to always bring guys over for sparring. So we had a relationship. It was just that, you know, I was, after leaving my previous trainer, I wanted to somebody to help me work on fundamentals, you know what I mean? And I was thinking of guys in the area. I wasn't too fond of traveling to train because I trained for 12 years at home. I said, so I need somebody in the area to train with. And Coach K worked with all the Olympians, and I, I, I seen fighters like Shakur Stevenson, uh, you know, Troy Osney, Keyshawn Davis, you know, all them guys. They're, they're sharp. They're fundamentally sound. So I wanted to go with someone like him. And uh, we already had the connection. We already had the friendship. And, and I went over there, man, and it, it worked like magic. Uh, it would be a J-Rock. J-Rock, but, you know, uh, like I said, I don't know how things will go. I mean, he did just lose. He might have a rematch, so I don't know. But y'all know I wanted my title back all along. Like my coach, my coach told me, though, he said, uh, man, if you go into that rematch in those conditions, I'm not going to train you. So at the end of the day, I, I really, it was it was more being smart, like I said, worried about myself. I can't let my pride get in the way of of, 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 of not being smart, man. So I had I had to make a smart decision. I only had about two months of training, you know, and, and it wouldn't work out. So I want to go back into the rematch with J-Rob, but I don't know how things will work. Jared, how do you see um, next month, Wilder Fury 2? How do you got it? Uh, I'm, going, I'm going Deontay Wilder, but Deontay Wilder cannot do what he did against Ortiz. He can't sit 
and wait for that one shot. I know Deontay Wilder's favorite line is they got to be perfect for 12 rounds. All I got to do is be perfect for one second, you know what I mean? So he can't do that with Tyson Fury. And depending on that one shot, he got to put, put in work and he come out the way. Do you think Billy Joe is worthy of being the front candidate for Canelo Alvarez? Uh, yeah, I mean, Canelo got the best resume in Boston to be. He should be pound for pound number one. At the end of the day, I don't care who, who else they put on there. Nobody has the resume that Canelo has. And he keeps on fighting worthy opponents back to back to back. Who cares if they say they fight him at the wrong time? He's going up in different weight classes and conquering titles. He's doing his thing, man. He's pound pound best to be number one right now. And nobody's resume or nobody who's, who's in Boston right now done what he's doing. Hey, Jared, are we going to see the regular tone hair color are we going to see something different and are you going to be singing you know you know just are we still going to see swift oh yeah we're still going to, uh, look swift ain't going nowhere you know what i'm saying i told myself this though the blonde hair won't come back till i get my belts back you know what i mean swift is back you know what i mean so as long as i ain't got my belts i'm gonna be black hair swift so i get them back jared do you have you don't have green hair under there do you oh no nah, no nah. <laughs> hey look i had to go with the money green man we ain't got no green hair right, no <laughs> it's still black man yeah yeah hey what type of fighter different are we going to see on Saturday, ideally, after the end of the fight? You know, this is what you've been seeing at Barclays Center. What are we going to see different, man? Uh, man, you know, uh, you're just going to see me be me. You know, um, it's like I said, it's not really going to be different. It's going to bring back the old me. Uh, you know, one thing in my fights I did a lot, I started slow, and I always played catch-up. That's one thing we don't want to do. We don't want to keep trying to play catch-up at the end of the day, and uh, we just want to dominate the entire fight. And I'm sorry if it was already asked and answered, but did you watch the J-Rock fight against Rosario or yeah, no? Yes, I seen it. And what did you think? Uh, man, he just had a bad night. You know, um, it happens. You know, it happened to me. You know, I really don't have no opinion on him. He, he, he lost the fight, and uh, hopefully he bounced back. It didn't probably affect you as far as how seriously you're taking this, because I'm assuming you're a constant pro. But did it, in your mind, did you say to yourself, okay, well, maybe he was looking past this guy? I don't know. Like I yeah. said, those are things you got to ask J-Rock. I don't All know right. if he looked past him. I don't know what he did. One thing he did with me, he trained out of town. You know, he went to, and he was focused. This time he trained here at home, so who knows what, what was the issue. I don't know. But you would like to fight him next. You're going to deal with this one Saturday. But yeah. ideally, you would like J-Rock again. Oh, yeah, man, most definitely. That's my only loss. Like, yeah, I want the revenge, so. Two more questions, guys. Jared, Jared, I'm going to say Saturday, are we going to hear that uh, three-point singers? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 I love that, man. Let's get that back. Hit it one time. We run out. <coughs> it's Mr. Kid that pay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get on down, man. Hey. Yeah. Last week, what happened with, with, with uh, J-Rock and Rosario? I have the utmost respect for J-Rock. But what happened with J-Rock and Rosario? You know, it's just, it's just, if you have two good hands, it's going to work out. You know, it's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, how do you feel about this weight, seeing that you're moving up and facing someone that's considered pretty big for this weight as well? Yeah, I mean, an opportunity presented itself to fight someone like Jerry Hurd, so I can't turn it down. Uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm a campaign at welterweight for most of my career and fought a lot of the elite fighters in, in, in the welterweight division, but when, uh, when an opportunity like that uh, is presented, like I said before, it's uh, I can't turn it down. Um, so I said yes. I know they choose me for a reason, but I also picked him for a reason. You know, so I I agree to fight him and and, and try to display uh, a side that nobody's ever seen from me before. Do you see any weaknesses from the fight from her had with J Rock going into this fight? No, so, I mean, you know, I think J Rock was just a better man that night, um, and it happens. It's boxing, you know. Um, I, 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 I seen some stuff, I'm sure people have seen some stuff on me, um, I see a lot of strengths of his, you know, so I was just tuning in on Saturday. What do you make of uh, Jared's performance of the last week? I mean, I, we were all in shock, I was in shock, you know, considering that J-Rock, uh, since, since we fought back in, you know, 2011 or 12, uh, he's improved so much. Uh, I actually, I actually pick up some a couple moves from him, you know, because yeah, man, you know, he's improved so much. And and that fight, I mean, that's why you know Rosario. I seen him fight before when he fought Nathaniel Gallimore. 
Uh, I just think, you know, uh, maybe it was just, you know, the, 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 the wrong game plan. Uh, but he's been there before, and I'm sure he'll bounce back again. Like you just said, he's obviously bounced back before. Um, do you think Jared Hurd was just made for him? Or do, you, do you see him coming back uh, and winning a little title in the division? Um, wait, repeat that question? Do you, do you think Jared Hurd was made for him? Obviously, he bounced back going forth if uh, faced Jared Hurd. Do you think he'll be the same forward, or do you think you know he won't win a title in the way? Because we'll, we'll, we'll find out this weekend, you know. I mean, he has the, this is his first fight back since, since the J-Rock fight, and some people... Uh, it's hard for you know some people you know they fall through depression and it's hard for them to bounce back up. So it, it all depends of on on what was you know if anything was taken out of him from from his fight with J Rock. You know so we'll we'll, we'll have to wait and see what uh, going forward from that. You know. Final message to the fight fans. Everybody just tune in on Showtime. You know I know I'm a I'm a big underdog and there's been a lot of uh, big upsets lately. So I'm uh, I'm here trying to. Trying to make my Rocky story, you know. Uh, my uh, Rocky Two is my favorite movie, and the, the best quote was when the Duke was telling uh, when the Duke when the Duke was telling Apollo Creed, "He's all he's all bad for us, baby. That man just keeps coming after you. I see no man get hit before, and he kept coming after you. So um, expect that from me." Expect that from me, you know. Awesome. Thank you. Can you talk about how you prepare for Jared Hurd's size and what he brings to the ring? Yeah, I mean, it's it's you know you, you think that I'm moving up to to the super welterweight division, right? I was in there at least you know fight in the average 54, you know, fighting the biggest 54 pounder, you know, uh, out there. But um, I just you know we prepare with the. the Intense sparring, you know, with sparring is key because it's the closest thing to a fight. You can hit the bags, we can do do the drills, do the mitt work, but um, the closest thing to a fight is is, is sparring because it's that's basically it. So I, I, I spar with tall dudes, big guys that were pushing me around and giving me basically giving me a hard time, and that's what I, I need to get comfortable to be able to do that. Perfect. Anything else, guys? We're good. And I'm Crystal Hart reporting from Gleason's Gym here in Brooklyn, New York. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the fights.